two women have been hurt following an explosion at a Dublin railway station. A two-kilogram device was planted by the Ulster Volunteer Force, but only the detonator went off. Security forces in Dublin said that had the bomb exploded properly, it would have caused serious injury and damage. It is the second time the UVF have attacked Dublin recently. In May, they killed a doorman at a pub being used for a Sinn Féin fundraising event. Since the IRA ceasefire, there's been a spate of attacks by loyalist paramilitaries. Only hours after the ceasefire announcement, the body of Sean McDermott was found. He'd been shot by the UVF. On Thursday, the 1st of September, the Ulster Freedom Fighters killed John O'Hanlon. The following Sunday, the UVF exploded a car bomb outside Sinn Féin's Belfast headquarters. And then this Saturday, the UVF planted a five-pound bomb, which was defused by the army outside the home of a Sinn Féin councillor. In the north, some unionist politicians have suggested that the south will continue to be the target of attacks because of the Irish government's decision to involve the Sinn Féin leader, Gerry Adams, in the political process. We have two reports on today's bombing and the reaction to it. The first from Liz Donnelly in Dublin. It was shortly before midday that the explosion took place on a train as it arrived here at Connolly Street Station. Police said it had been caused by a two kilogram bomb, but only the detonator went off. The device exploded just as the train was pulling into Connolly Station. Uh, it was just, uh, I think, a few hundred yards out from Connolly Station, and the people in the carriage were getting ready to uh, leave the train. They were gathering up their bags and their luggages just uh, when the device exploded. This is the main rail terminal for services from Belfast and other parts of Northern Ireland. Irish Rail had received a telephone warning from the loyalist terrorist group, the Ulster Volunteer Force, just a minute before the explosion. There was a woman whose leg was badly cut and uh, stained with this powder, silver powder that she, on the backs of them, and then a man with her and a boy of about 18, 19. They were the ones that were taken away in, in the ambulance. Today's attack was not unexpected. Gunmen were believed to be targeting Dublin in the wake of the IRA ceasefire announcement. Troops patrolled the city's streets after a warning that there would be further explosions in six other locations, but no other bombs were found. I would condemn this attack out of hand. I just hope it's not the start of a, of a campaign by the loyalist paramilitaries. And I hope they will see sense and that they will lay down their arms like the IRA because this serves no useful purpose whatsoever. This is the first attack here in Dublin since Widow Scallon's pub was targeted by the UVF three months ago. They shot a doorman dead and planted a bomb which failed to go off while a Sinn Féin fundraising event was taking place. Today's bomb could have been far more serious and observers say there's a fear here of large-scale bombs. The worst single atrocity of the entire course of the Troubles occurred in May 1974 when 35 people were killed in a series of bombings in Dublin and in Monaghan. And that is at the back of the minds of every guard officer and every minister in the Irish cabinet. The Irish government, which is to hold a special cabinet meeting tomorrow, have said they do not want to see any retaliation for today's attack. They still hope that within a short time, the loyalist gunmen will also join the peace process. Liz Donnelly, Channel 4 News in Dublin. That loyalist anger at what they see as Mr Reynolds' government trying to create a united Ireland behind their backs should result in a bomb attack in Dublin has prompted little surprise in Belfast. Earlier this year, loyalists signalled their intention to make their views felt with bombs and that Dubliners should be ready for a new loyalist campaign. And the son of a UDA leader, who is the spokesman for the small Ulster Democratic Party, gave this warning. The impression that I would get would be that the intention has always been there to move their operations at some stage across the border. Uh, again, I think it was inevitable. And in doing so, I would have seen what the loyalist paramilitaries would be trying to engage in as uh, perhaps hit, trying to hit economic targets as it, or government targets. The Ulster Volunteer Force appears to be using more sophisticated devices that are either using small amounts to destabilise rather than kill, or the device misfired. 
There's a fear that there may now be a dangerous escalation of the conflict involving the Ulster Freedom Fighters, despite continued hopes for a loyalist ceasefire. There are still a clearly well-placed people who are acting creatively within the loyalist community. There would be a concern, however, that the actions of the UVF will now be mimicked by those of the UFF. And if that is the case, then we may be entering a more dangerous phase in, in recent days. While last week's statement by the combined Loyalist Military Command created optimism which appears premature today, a ceasefire may still be on the cards, but a Unionist politician suggested the ball was in Albert Reynolds' court. There's far too many statements concerning Northern Ireland coming out of Dublin, full stop, and I think it's exacerbating the situation here. Uh, and I would strenuously ask politicians in the Republic to refrain from continuous statements and comments concerning Northern Ireland's future because what that is doing is adding further instability into the system and that's what we do not need at the moment. John Hume, the SDLP leader who's been a powerful force over the past few months, has offered to meet the loyalist gunmen and address their concerns. It's unlikely they'll accept because tonight the UVF in Belfast has issued a statement which says that Northern Ireland will not be forced, coerced or persuaded into a united Ireland and they see John Hume as one of the prime movers towards that end. Jane Bennett-Powell, Channel 4 News, Belfast.